So there's always different ways to do things and I just want to give you guys a few different scenarios here on how we could create a repository. We already tried to create new repository here, but the first time we actually added um, a readme file right away. So if you remember when I created it, I, I selected add the readme file, right? Let's not do this this time. Let's just create a new one here and I'll just call it test uh, again, just test, that's fine. And here I have a public one again. I won't pick any of these guys and I'll say create. The difference here is that this time, because there's no readme file, because the repository is completely empty, it gives me some options on how I can actually create a repository. And one of them is that I create it using the command line. We already tried a lot of this, so we'll do this first. Let's try this time to create the repository using the command line tool. I know it's still scary with the command line tool, but you guys can do it. It's not that complex to work with a command line tool. You have to work with it. Okay, let's try and open the terminal. And I'll just pretty much look at this. It says here exactly what to do. It's just line by line what I have to execute. Okay, so first I have to decide where I want to create my Git repository. So only using the terminal, I'll start by making a new directory. I'll call it um, test, but I think that's already there. Let me just delete that one from the old lesson. There it is, delete, there we go. Then I'll write mkdir or make a directory and then I'll call it test. There we go. I have a new directory called test. I'll go into that directory. This is the first steps you have to do and they are not listed inside this documentation right here. You have to be in some kind of directory. Okay. Then we could make a text file in test. Let's just do that just to show you. I'll right click here and I'll say new and I'll just create a text document here. I'll call it cheese. There we go. It's not the right spell, doesn't matter. Now we have something in here. So if I make, how was it? An ls or a drr, dir, then you can see what's actually in the folder. Yeah, you have to learn some, some commands here. So we'll stay there. <coughs> and now I'll actually just run these guys. I can actually run them all, but I'll just run them, run them one by one. First, the first command is just going to make a readme file. The one I talked about last time. So I've made the readme file. I'll show you what it does in a second. You can see it's here. I'm, I've made a new file called readme. Good. Next, what it will do? It'll tell my local machine. I just want to open my calendar. Now it'll tell my local machine that this directory is actually a git directory. That's the command git in it. Okay, now we're in a git directory. Now you can see it changed into being a master directory, so now it knows a bit about gits. That means that now I can do a git status. I can start using my git commands. <clears throat> Next, what to do? Well, I want to add the readme file. And in my case, I want to add the readme file. So I'll do a git add readme. Remember that's for staging, but I also want to add the other file that I made, the cheese. So I'll just write cheese here, not cheese. Add <coughs> the cheese.txt file. There we go. Now we have both file added and ready to commit. So what's the next? Well, guess what? It's actually the git commit. So just notice these are all the steps that we did locally last time. The only difference will be there in a second. So now we have to do this. Now we have to tell git, let me show you in the command prompt. Now we have to tell git, it's great that everything is local. This we've done a lot of times in the previous videos, but how do we actually tell git to use the local and then know where to send the code when we do the push? That's the command here. We tell it there's a remote repository and its origin is actually under HTTPS, GitHub, yada, yada, this URL that we used before to clone locally. This is kind of just a command you have to learn. This is a way for me to hook my local environment with the environment in the cloud. So that's the command. That's what it's doing. It's saying bind the two together. So now I know where to push my code, where to send my code, when I want to push it. Okay, so I'll do this and now the test environment, the local Git repository knows where to send the code when I do the push command. And that's the last one I do here. I say push from, <clears throat> push your code locally from origin to master. So it means that I want to push my code from my master branch, which is here, right here it says master, and I want to send it to origin which is in the cloud. I hope that makes sense. Let me try and do this. 
Just notice right now there's nothing in here. There's no code available anywhere. No code. That's why we see this setup file. And now when I launch this, Gashingi, give it a second. It actually sends it up here. And if I do a refresh, just try that again. <laughs> there we go. You'll see the code is now actually available here. And notice, readme text is down here. So whatever I put inside this guy will actually display down here right away. Like I said, below the project, you'll see what's inside the readme file. We'll do that next lesson. See you in a second.